Hey guys, welcome back to the News Desk here on Comic Nation TV on INeedComics.com, part of the Pop Culture Network. Whether you like it or not, I am your host, Dirt, and you know, Comic Nation TV issue 8 is almost out. In fact, it should be out within 24 hours. Uh, Rob Bass is working very hard trying to get it to fit on the internets. Apparently, the internets just aren't big enough for Comic Nation TV issue 8, but... As far as the weekly news update goes, we're going to do a quick news desk here and throw in a couple reviews just to tide you over until we can actually get Comic Nation TV issue 8 out. So, let's start out here with a little bit of Marvel news. Uh, Marvel is pushing their point one in 2012. Now, those of you familiar with the point one initiative, it's been this deal in the Marvel books this last year where they've had an issue number plus point one. And they've been trying to uh, do a story that is good for new readers. To set you up on a new story arc, or to introduce you to the characters, or to do something to get you into the series. Well, now they've announced the Point One Special that will be actually coming out to set up several new series. Now, it's going to be 64 pages. It's going to be a slew of writers and artists from all these different upcoming uh, series. And they put out a bunch of teasers, and the teasers don't really tell you a whole lot. They just give you some images, so you have to kind of guess on your own what these series are going to be. But it looks like the first one is going to be a new Nova series. The second one is a bunch of Ultrons, so it's maybe an Ultron miniseries or something coming. I'm not sure. Uh, this one looks like a new Defenders series. And finally, uh, is this the Scarlet Spider? Not too sure on that one. Um, now, the one they have confirmed in Point One is a new series coming out of Uncanny X-Force uh, from the pages of the Dark Angel Saga. So those of you who are big X-Force fans, you can look forward to that new series next year. Moving over to GG Studio. A lot of you not familiar with GG Studio. They're, I believe, an Italian company. And uh, they've been putting out books like Skeleton Story and Gore. And uh, they've, they've been doing pretty well. But now they're going to be making a big push with their new series, The Extinction Seed. It's going to be a zero issue followed by a six issue mini series, which will lead into three new series from them next year. The three series are Mist edge and arise and the reason why this is news is because they actually put a preview online if you search the interwebs or check out the forum at uh, popculturenetwork.com we'll put up a link uh, and you can uh, find your way over to that preview uh, next up, Dynamite. Dynamite announced that they got the rights to Voltron, Defender of the Universe. This, of course, on the heels of the new TV series. Uh, Relativity, Relativity Media got the rights to the live-action movie that they're going to go into production next year. Uh, there's the new toy line. And Viz, of course, working on new kid-friendly uh, manga based on the new cartoon series. So... This from Dynamite, written by Brandon Thomas, uh, who is known mainly for his work on Robin over at DC Comics, and also his own Miranda Mercury character at Arkea. Uh, DC News this week, everything sold out. I mean, that's the new DC 52. Everything's going back for a second print. Uh, Justice League, I believe, is on fourth print already. Uh, they are doing um, second prints, maybe even third print, I'm not sure, of the bagged version with the download code for Comixology. So, uh, so far, the DC book's big hit online. Comixology won't release actual sales numbers, but they have said that they are the best-selling books uh, they're breaking the sales records on Comixology, and they are breaking sales records in comic book shops. So, good on you, DC. Alright, now moving over to the reviews section, we've got four books from Aspen Comics. Now, two of them we were actually going to review last week, but because of the untimely death of Mink Ustever, we just dedicated last week's Comic Nation news desk to him. Uh, so this week we're going to look at the two we were going to look at last week, and the two uh, we're looking at today. Uh, first up, we're going to start with Fathom number two. Uh, 
Now, Fathom is fighting this parasite that is getting into human hosts and uh, starting to take control over them. And the problem is you can't es extract it from humans without killing them. So Fathom is finding herself in this moral dilemma. And at the same time, there's a female police officer uh, who knows that there's a threat. She's trying to, uh, you know, get involved and help. And she's not exactly sure, you know, what to do or how to do it. So you've got this... Uh, you know, supernatural being in Fathom trying to fix the problem and not kill anybody, and you've got this human character who's not really sure what to do, and the two of them have tr are going to try to have to figure out uh, how to stop this parasite. And, uh, you know, again, with Aspen Comics, uh, most of the time the artwork is just so top-notch, the colors are just so vivid and wonderful, they use a lot of, uh, you know, comic uh, digital art manipulation to make it look great. This is, you know, no exception to that. This is just fantastic. Um, you know, if you have any interest at all in Fathom, if you've read any books at any point, uh, this is a fun series and it's worth checking out. Soul Fire number four. Now this one's mostly a Malachi flashback issue. We see his tortured past as he keeps, uh, you know, failing more or less again and again. We see him as a young boy in a boarding house. He's getting beat up all the time because he's too pretty. You know, he's a pretty boy with long blonde hair, uh, so everyone picks on him. And so we're getting some good deep background into Malachi's character. Now, the question is, is this leading up to something? Is the next issue going to do something with that tragic past to build upon it? Or is this, you know, basically just a filler issue, a breather issue, just to give you some background before, you know, the next big battle? We don't know. Um, I'm hoping it'll pay off into something a little bit more next time. This issue as a standalone alone is not the greatest but in an overall arc if it leads to something then it'll be worthwhile now we've got two executive assistant books we've got executive assistant violet number three and executive assistant iris number four these are both part of the hit list agenda which has been going through all these executive books over the summer you've probably seen a lot of them on the stands at your local comic shop basically the main bad guy duncan valone I guess that's how you pronounce his name. Um, he is using his executive assistants to uh, murder their executives so that he can take over their companies. He is also uh, more or less uh, getting in the middle of this war between India and Pakistan, and everything he does seems to escalate these tensions, which is somehow going to help him. Uh, now, we've talked before about these executive assistant books here on Comic Nation TV News Desk. And, you know, as you know, they're, uh, you know, bloody. They've got action. They've got hot chicks in skin-tight suits. Um, you know, it's basically for that crowd of people who like those type of... Uh, you know, I don't want to say it's exploitation, but that's, you know, really basically how it fits in the movie genre. So you can kind of use that term here. But here in Violet number three... Um, Duncan asks her to kill her executive, and she's too close to him. She's been, uh, you know, too entrenched with him. She tries to save his life, only to watch him sacrifice himself for her. So she escapes, but decides that she's going to uh, destroy Duncan, and she doesn't know how, and she doesn't know who's going to help her. Uh, she reunites with her mom, who is also this kick-ass hot chick. So that was actually kind of cool, kind of funny. Um, and she goes to save her boyfriend and then realizes, you know, she's got to do something. No one's going to be safe until Duncan is taken care of. And the issue ends, her three of three uh, miniseries, issue ends with her meeting up with a couple other assistants who are out to stop Duncan as well. So it looks like there's actually a community of executive assistants starting to band together who are going to take on Duncan. Now, this leads into Executive Iris 4, because Iris herself wants to escape from Duncan's control. She knows how evil he is, she knows all these terrible things he's doing, and so uh, she wants to escape, but I think Duncan has figured this out, because he sends her on a mission uh, with Rose and uh, Jupiter... Is it Juniper? I wrote Jupiter, but I'm pretty sure it's Juniper, because I'm not sure there's a Jupiter uh, flower. But regardless, sends her on a suicide mission with those two. And as Iris tries to make her escape, they have a big battle until Rose finally calls it to a stop. And uh, Iris then finds out that Rose has been given the ability to control Iris. 
And with that, she hands Iris a uh, a big handful of C4 plastic explosives, tells her to sit and wait and hold the bomb. And as Juniper and Rose escape, the building blows up, presumably killing Iris. Now, I'm just going to go out on a limb here and guess that somehow she escaped and survived. Maybe she pretended to be brainwashed or to go along with the control. Uh, maybe she actually was, but the other assistants that we just saw in Violet Number 3 uh, come in and save her. Not exactly sure, but it does end on a nice cliffhanger. Now, I will say the art in Violet is not quite as great as some of the other Aspen books. Uh, the art in Iris, I, you know, I have no problem with, but the art in Violet was kind of flat um, and uh, it looked a little rushed in spots. But overall, I have to say that these, all these books in the Hit List agenda, honestly, you know, if I was, if if I hadn't been, uh, you know, in contact with Aspen Comics, if they hadn't been sending these for review, I don't know that I would have picked them up. I would have just gone, yeah, 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 chicks in skin tight suits, explosions, whatever. But since I've actually been sitting down and reading them, I've actually started to enjoy them. I look forward to these new issues of the Executive Assistance. The Hit List agenda is working on me. As a matter of fact, I'm probably going to buy the trade when it comes out and read it all again, assuming there's a trade. There's going to be a trade, right? Everybody does trade nowadays. So, uh, I am looking forward to rereading this series, you know, in its entirely, uh, once it gets uh, collected somehow, or maybe I'll just try to scrounge up all the issues uh, individually. But it's been a fun ride. And that's something that, you know, a lot of comics these days are missing. They try to get too deep, too dark, too introspective. They try to say something social or something political. And a lot of times what they're saying is stuff I don't want to pay attention to. But in this book, the pure action, the fun, the explosions, the chicks, it's all good. And I've really been enjoying this. So if you want to give something a chance that you don't normally check out, grab some of these executive assistant books. Um, you know, if you want to grab, you know, the three issues of Violet, uh, a couple issues of Iris, a couple issues of whatever, just go out and grab them and read them and you're going to have a good time. Most of the issues work fine as a standalone storyline of someone, you know, ending on a cliffhanger. They always seem to end on a cliffhanger regardless of if it's issue to issue or the end of the series. But uh, you always get good action, good explosions, some fun dialogue, uh, you know, cheesy Tarantino-esque type stuff going on here. It's a lot of fun, and it's worth checking out. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for today on the news desk here on Comic Nation TV, INeedComics.com, part of the Pop Culture Network. If you would like to send us an email, you can always do so, dirt at popculturenetwork.com uh, or dirt at INeedComics.com. You can always leave us a voicemail on our 24-hour voicemail line. It's area code 217-953-4025, and that is automated. So you never have to talk to a human being. Just wait for the beep and you can leave a message. You can also stop by popculturenetwork.com, join the forums, leave us feedback in the comics section, and I look forward to hearing from you guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you next time. Dirt, call me!